Our Father, we just want to thank you again. We love you. We love you. That we can dance with our brothers and sisters with no suspicion. No fear that somebody is about to poison us. No fear that somebody is praying against us, fall down and die. That I can, the smile from my brother is a genuine smile. I really wish me well. Thank you. Thank you. If it were the enemy that have given us all these things, we would have asked for blood. We would have asked of so much and even just to disgrace us. But you give it to us free of charge. We appreciate your goodness and your mercy and your favor. You will never turn back. You will never go back. May your name and your name only be glorified in the name of Jesus. You are the one building your church. Please continue to build in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Please, I beg you, before you leave today, make sure you collect somebody's cell phone number that doesn't come from your church. Because when we have a garden like this, it's for networking. Amen. Amen. Many of you are not members of Yazin. You don't know what networking is. <laughs> you know what networking is? Because there are so many of you since you came yesterday, you have been sitting by the same, by the side of the same person. <laughs> Amen. And that same person is from your church. Amen. How many notes? If you are the one I'm talking about, just raise up your hand. You have been sitting in the same seat since you came yesterday. You are sitting by the same person, and you've not collected even one cell number of anybody. Please, I beg. You. <laughs> so do us a favor. Amen. The reason why God has allowed you to be to buy the ticket and come is to network. Amen. So find somebody else. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't know. <laughs> so make sure you network, get somebody's cell number, email address, their credit card number, you know. <laughs> the pin on the we pray about that. <laughs> Before they leave, it's your brother and your sister now. It is well in Jesus' name. So this last session is about sharing the vision for RCCGNA. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish or the people cast off restraint. But he that keepeth the law, happy he is. If you look at the 10 mistakes leaders make that uh, Pastor uh, Lake you presented yesterday, Talks about number three is lack of vision. Amen. No vision, no future. If there is no vision, no, no vision, energy is wasted. If there is no vision, everybody, we're in the same boat, but everybody is paddling, going in different directions. Amen. There was a story of a man who bought a brand new refrigerator. Amen. He asked somebody to help him move it inside. And as they were pushing, the refrigerator never moved. What's going on? And he asked the guy, what do you want to do? One person, they are lifting it up, but one person is pushing this way, the other is pushing that way. Because there was no clear communication on what the guy wanted. So after a while, he says, what's going on here? The refrigerator is not moving. He said, but I thought you want to move it out. You know the other says that. But I told you I want to move it in. So wasted energy. Our energy will not be wasted in Jesus' name. So just ask your neighbor, say, which direction are you pushing? I hope you are pushing upward. At the beginning of the year, our Father and the Lord spoke into our lives that is going to be a year of new things. I stand today to prophesy into your life that new things of joy, new things of laughter, new things of greatness, new things of breakthrough will start to happen in your life, in your home, and your ministry in the name of Jesus. Quickly, the outline is vision for 2012, 2013, general update and statistics, financial report and other statistics. We want to focus on the three C's, current initiatives, update ministry affairs, and event questions and answers. I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes or 40 minutes, then we throw the floor open for questions and answers. What you had yesterday, what you had today, you want to make a smart remark or some comments, you're allowed to do that. Amen. A new thing, what does a new thing stand for? You have the handouts. 
The acronym is there. A stands for the Almighty God. In Genesis chapter 16, because Abraham waited and they couldn't find a child, said, hey, go and shack up with Hagar. And they did, and they produced an Ishmael. And in Genesis chapter 17, God came around and says, I am the Almighty God. All this, try to help yourself. Enough is enough for it. Walk before me and be that perfect. The promise that I've given to you, I'm going to make you a father of nations. I've not changed my mind. And I will see to it that I do it. In verse 17 of that Genesis, it says, Abraham laughed and fell down laughing. Who is he laughing at? It's just as if your son came to you and said, son, if you finish, you know, you, you get perfect connectivity, I'm going to buy you a car. <laughs> Daddy, you buy me a car. And your son laugh and laugh and he falls down. What are you going to do to that child? You will kill him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know who Abraham was laughing at? God. Look at verse 17 of Genesis 17. Read this in your Bible. It says, and Abraham laughed. Laughed and he fell down laughing. <laughs> if I were a God, I would shrink him to an ant. He will never have that child again. But you know what? What God has purpose in his mind, he will do what he said he will do. In spite of your own belief. Did Abraham have the child or not? Yes. What God has purpose for your life, you will receive it in Jesus' name. He says, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. She move it up. And <laughs> One second. <laughs> what does the A stand for now? Almighty God. And there in your hand, what does it stand for? New dreams. Do you know everybody around Joseph was dreaming dreams? What is your dream? There's a dream you have about your life. For one reason or the other, circumstances, issues, papers, I've made you to stop dreaming. But I dare you to dream again. I did what? I dare you to dream again. He says, Joseph came and dreamt that he saw 11 sheep bowing down to him. And his brother says, are you crazy? You are the last born. There's no hope for you. Shut up. Your dream. They said, Joseph went to bed and dreamt again. By this time, the dream was even bigger than the first. He said, I saw the moon and the stars. Ha! I dare you to dream. You know, coming to America, you know, it's not as if God told me I'm coming to America. Somebody challenged me, think you are smart, you know. I say, yes, go to America now, go and prove yourself. You are smart in physics, chemistry, go and prove The best are there. So I went to my house, my brother's house, my father's house, what does it matter, my house. Amen. <laughs> I sat down one afternoon and I closed my eyes and I dreamed about America. And where am I now? America. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor say, I dare you to dream. You. No, for real, for real now. If God doesn't give you a dream, make one up for yourself. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. E means excellence. Please, everything that you do that is not done excellently well is not of God. Joseph, serve with excellence. Please, serve with excellence. Wholeheartedly serve the Lord. Joshua said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Trials, whether you like it or not, there are three phases in life. You are either heading to trouble, you are either in trouble or coming out of trouble. <laughs> life is full of what? Trouble. But ask your neighbor, don't laugh at me here too. I mean, just you're coming out of trouble and you may be heading into yours. So please chill, amen. Life is filled with trials. God will see to it. Before you get to the promised land, you have to go through the wilderness. Everybody have their own wilderness. But when I'm in my wilderness, don't laugh at me. Because yours is ahead. Trials will come. Hope. The Bible says there is hope for a tree, even when it is cut down. If there is hope for an ordinary tree, there is hope for you. Don't give up on your dreams. God will give you a new thing. Intercession. Until Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, God was ready to go and destroy everybody. And he said, God, how about 50 people? God says, if there are 50 people, I will not. Amen. Please, don't be the type of Christians that get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. Hello? Get all you can, can all you get, and that is not of God. Is it every member of your family that has been saved? 
But the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. Hold God to his words. By the special grace of God, I'm the first to be saved in my family. And God see to read that my father and my mother were saved. All my brothers are saved. My father gave his life to Christ a week before he passed away. In Ifewara, we have the redeemed Christian church of Ifewara. It's one of those big cities. You know? yeah. Amen. Even though it's not in the map of Nigeria, but very, very big. Praise the Lord. Why are you laughing now? So my father was in his veranda. If you know what veranda is, go and Google it. He was in his veranda that the Jew was preaching at the back of our house. And during that time, he never knew he was going to pass away. And then you make an altar call. And in front of his veranda, he knelt and gave his life to Christ a week after he passed away. Because one little boy there believed God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And the household. My brothers are now senior pastors in the church. I was the first to be saved. And I held God to his word. Many of you are just sending money home. West Point Union, they have to jump, you jump. Let there be a string attached to the money you are sending home. Amen. Amen. You don't go to Redeemed Church. You don't go to a Pentecostal church. I ain't sending money. Mm. Praise. <laughs> <laughs> no, pardon, pardon, my American. Yeah, Amen. Right, if they yeah. know that you are serious, I ain't sending money. Man. Your money is God's money. Oh. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, yes sir. Because they think you just have a money tree at the back of your house. <laughs> send money and say, honey, they don't come again. But at the end of the day, you send the money. Why don't you attach a string to the money? Mm -hmm. Sir, I will send money, but sir, before this money comes, you have to go to church. What are you asking for? You never, no, 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 no. This is God's money. I will send the money. Let me hear from the pastor that you go. And very soon, you never know. You never know. Can you imagine going to heaven and your brother says, ah, so you know about God, and you never tell me, and you are not going up, and they start dragging your shirt. Every member in your family, they will be saved in Jesus' name. Yeah. They will give their life to Jesus in Jesus' name. Yeah. Intercession, natural into spiritual. Romans chapter 7. All you hear in Romans 7 is, I, 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 I want to do this, I can't. There are over 41 eyes in Romans chapter 7. But in Romans chapter 8, there are two eyes. I am persuaded. That nothing in this world, nothing on earth to come can be able to separate me. And there is another eye here talking about the goodness of God. Do you know that in Romans chapter 7, the word Holy Spirit is never mentioned once? But in Romans chapter 8, about 7 or 8 times, the word Holy Spirit is mentioned. What am I saying? God wants to be a Christian of Romans chapter 8. That you are no, long, you are no longer a carnal man. You are a man led by the Spirit, controlled by the Spirit. Do you know it's in Romans chapter 8, it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That is never Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 is, I, I want to do this, I couldn't do this. I want to do that, I want to jump, I couldn't jump. I think it's I, 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 I. How many times are you going to pray about I? So be Romans chapter 8 person. And guidance, please, I beg you, Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Guidance, where you want to go tomorrow, some people have been there today. Why don't you see guidance? In the multitude of cancer, there is it. Many of you want to start businesses, and God is going to prosper it, but my people are not talking. There's nobody competing with you in the church. There are people who have started business yesterday, and they succeeded at it. Why don't you type there and say, please, help me. I want to start this business. Many of us have lost thousands of dollars. One thing the Jewish, Jewish people are doing, they patronize themselves. They set themselves up to succeed. And every Jewish there that have made it always have 12 disciples. That they are training to be like them. The issue of the 12 disciples have always been existing in the Jewish community before Jesus came. Hello? Who are your own circle of influence? Who are you, who are you helping to move to the next ladder? Seek guidance. You want to get married? Seek guidance. Amen. There's a boy that comes to church, he wants to marry me. Before you marry him, seek guidance. He may have an ulterior motive. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. They are talking about you now. No, for real, this one is yours. The G is yours. Seek guidance. You want to build a big church? There are many of our pastors that have never left their church for two years. They preach every Sunday. They are always, they are the one that opened the church. They are the one that closed the church. Please get a life. What do I say? There's a life. You will not die. You know, if you fall down because of heart attack, 
by next Sunday, the provincial pastor is sent another pastor there. Yes. Amen. Amen. And they will just say, Let, let's, let's observe one minute silence. <laughs> and the minute one minute silence, they're already texting each other. You know? So if you go, you go. So please, I beg you, where you want to go tomorrow, somebody has been there before. Seek guidance. As I said, greatness is what? Greatness is contagious. Go and look at people who are doing their church differently. Go and seek counsel. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. God will do anything in your life. Amen. By the special grace of God, as of this year, we've given back to 205 babies. Amen. 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 That is only those who have completed the RPAD information. If you don't clap, do you know that having just one baby is between life and death? Amen. Amen. And all of you are expecting children you will deliver safely in Jesus' name. Amen. All these 205 people, amen, they deliver safely. Amen. We had the voice of the mother, we had the voice of the baby. Amen. And those of you who are pregnant, we hear your voice. Amen. We heard the voice of your baby. Amen. And you know, we are growing, even though we are not growing the right way, at least we are giving back to babies. So thanks be to God. Amen. We are solemnized 11 marriages, they are more than that, but only those who are completing the hard part. 51 people this year have been water baptized. Total parishes as of May. 31st, 2012, is 631 churches in North America. And as of date, we have 738 acres of land in Dallas that we are developing to have a university, to have a first-class hospital. We are going to have redemption estates there. We are going to have a golf course, first-class facility. And God will see to read that he help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Total churches in Mexico, actually we now have 30. Last week, we planned 10 churches in Mexico. Amen. And how do we start churches in Mexico? Because one person there believed God. I told him, Pastor Megidu, sir, that you said we should have 1,000 churches. In your church, you need to do your zone, you need to double. He laughed. He said, Chairman, don't, don't say that. He said, I just sent somebody out this year. Now you want me to double. I said, don't complain to me. I'm just a messenger. We are going to do it. He said, OK, yes, sir. I said, go and pray. I pray along with you. And within that one week, an opening happens in Mexico. That's two years ago, about a year ago. Now we have 30 churches. People in Mexico are hungry for God. When you see them do praise and worship, you see pastors, members crying. They are just young teenagers like this that are singing. The presence of God is mighty. And they are hungry for God. Now, just last week, 10 churches, lawyers, doctors, professors, who are pastors, they are giving their church over to redeem. So please, when God asks you to do something, he knows you cannot do it. Amen. And the only way to do it is go back to God. As long as you are depending on your small brain to calculate God, it ain't going to work. Praise the Lord. So when we ask you to double, to double, to double, that Jew is not going to change his mind. Amen. And if you can't beat him, do what? God will help us in Jesus' name. Bolivia, we have one church. Bahamas, two. In Belize, we have 12 churches now. In uh, Jamaica, we have three. In Trinidad and Tobago, two. In Antigua, one. In St. Kitts, one. Those are the churches God has helped you to help us to plant. Amen. Quickly, we want to talk about the three C's. The first C is church plan, planting and compliance. The other is coaching, and the other is camp uh, and community development. In church planting and compliance, for you to be able to say, yes, I want to plant a church, you need to focus on yourself. Amen. Personal growth is when you grow personally as a believer, you can be fruitful. And when there is fruitfulness in your life, it exudes out, it comes out. People look at you and say, you know what, that church you attend now? Oh, I attend the church in uh, Bellevue. You know, can, can I follow you to your church? Why? Because there is a growth in your life. And when you grow, that will lead to fruitfulness. And when you have a church that is 20 members today, it grows to 40 members tomorrow. It won't be difficult because of the distant people who are traveling to come to your to plant another church. There are many of our coordinators that are committed to church planting. And we continue to plant churches until Jesus comes. I can't hear your amen. amen. And those of you that say amen, many of you will be pastors tomorrow. Amen. 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 Pray. The blood that runs in the vein of the redeemed Christian church of God is church planting. The day we stop planting churches, the day we die. But we never die in Jesus' name. Amen. I know there are challenges in church planting. I know, I know. I'd be naive to tell you that there are no challenges. There are. 
But do you know how we plant churches? We have house fellowships, right? Yes. I hope you said. So the house fellowship is the one. The house fellowship already have a leader. The house fellowship already have people who are going there. Convert the father's house fellowship to you to be a church. But many of us are scared. If I let that one go, the people who are going to that house fellowship are the one. They are the biggest type members in my church. It's not your church. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the say, quack, quack. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Praise the Lord. Let them go. They are not your people. Do you know what? As they leave, your church will always increase. Yeah. I, I, when I went to Israel, and by the special grace of God, we are going to Israel again this year. Please go to our website, register, and go to Israel. Fanta, there's a city called the Red Sea. Amen. Yeah. No, no. Is, is it the Red Sea? No. It's Dead, sea. Dead Sea. Dead Sea. Do you know what happens to that sea? It never gives anything out. Just stay by itself. And do you know that when you go to that sea, if you don't even know how to swim, you will float on it. Amen. The Dead Sea. Why? Because it doesn't give out. There are many of our churches that are Dead Seas. You will not allow anybody to go out. You monitor the life of the people. They can't go to another church. They can't go and land. You don't let anything out. Don't be your church. Be a Dead Sea. No matter how small you are, as long as you say, God, I surrender. It's not my church. It's your church. You ask us to plant. I don't know how it's going to be. You know we can't even pay our rent. But I believe in church planting. How are we going to do it? Because you ask, God will make a way. Amen. Just like he made a way in Mexico. We never lost anybody. Do you know that all the churches we plant in Mexico, there are people in Nigeria that the pressure is on to go and start an international church. Praise the Lord. They are ready to give the money out. And who gets the credit? You get it. Pastor, may you not one person has left his church now, but is getting credit that he has planted 30 churches. And very soon he's going to become a provincial pastor. Why? Because he's planting churches. Hello? Hi. So if you believe it is doable, it will be doable. Amen. If you believe it is not possible, we are just going to be rigmaroling and stay in one place. But God will help us to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue in the Yes We Can campaign. Plant at least one parish. If your church is over 300 members, plant three churches. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Are there challenges? Yes, there are challenges. Quickly, there is a photocopy of papers. Ask Pastor Sire to help me do. But let's make sure. No, no, no. It's a different one. About the pavilion project. Oh. Amen. So the first is what? Church planting. And in church planting and compliance, how many of us are using the RPAD, pastors? How many of you don't know what RPAD even really stands for? You have never used it. I'm talking about pastors now. Amen. Praise the Lord. So all our pastors are using it. And if you don't know how to use it, talk to your pastor, your pastor, um, Dami Suleodo. You are using it, sir. You are using it. So they will, it's just five minutes. They will take you through. Because RPAD just gives us Thank you, sir. Thank you. The R pad is just an administrative system. Instead of you completing forms every day, and I have 10 people that come, five children, uh, our children always exceed adults. Anyways, we have five adults, we have 20 children, because many of our people are giving back to twins now, and triplets, <laughs> and cut triplets. And immediately you fill it out, not only are you going to have that data in your office, your coordinator gets it that same minute. Your provincial pastor gets it that same minute, and it goes directly to the head office that same minute. So at the end of the month, you don't have to, amen, be finding out, oh, what am I going to do? Because you know, and you know you can pay your, your remittances on a weekly basis, amen, because if you wait till the end of the month, praise the Lord, and the roof is leaking, uh, hello, to repair the roof is 2,000, and your remittance is 2,000, what do you do first? <laughs> <laughs> you are not in the spirit. <laughs> what, what do you do first? <laughs> you, are, you are not in the spirit, my brother. What are you supposed to do first? <laughs> Those of you say remittance, you are in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you pay your remittance first and God will take care of his church. Money will come. I'll be able to repair the roof. Right, Pastor Dami? <laughs> you better agree with me. <laughs> so please let us make sure we use the art part to comply with the information. But new church acquired, there will be no death in Jesus' name. Amen. We cancel the spirit of death yesterday, Amen. and that cancel permanently in Jesus' name. Amen. We are not going to conduct any burial services in our churches. Amen. No, 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 no. 
also on coaching. By the special grace of God, God has gifted this church. We have the house fellowship manual. We have Sunday school manual. We have the school of disciples. We have leadership training. We have a Bible college. We have ministers conference. If you attend all this, sir, conscientiously, you are going to be better than some bishops in America. Yes. yes. Because the materials are there, quality materials. There are many of us who don't even have Sunday school anymore in our churches. And the manuals are the best manuals we have produced to date. People in London want our manuals. Even some of the materials we are using is what they want to try to copy in Nigeria now. Because we have put the best people to write the materials. So please let us make sure during our Sunday school, everybody attend, even including the pastors. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the second, your the third is camp development and community initiatives. How many of you were just in the camp at this past convention? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know whether we can have access to our website. I will project it. Go to the rccjna.org and go to the camp and let us see the update. Amen. Go to the camp. Camp, camp project. Just let that thing be going. There, there, there was one that's one that you come up. No, not prophecies. No, no, let it go. In. Let that one be going. Very soon you see camp development. Okay, next one. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Israel tour. I think the next one after this. Okay, click that, click that. Pavilion project. And let's see what update on the pavilion. It's loading now. Ah, uh, what did you do? <laughs> okay, click that and let's see the update. I don't think they I did uploaded it. Let's see what is going on. Keep going. Next slide. That's how we appoint the foundation. You see, that's that's the update on the calm development. I don't think this is the latest, but keep going, keep going. That's the roof, and they've completed the roof already. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah, that's true. You see? Keep going, keep going, keep going. You see? That is the suite, that your suite, some restroom on the left hand side. Amen. You see, they are pouring some concrete there now. On some of the places, they. You see that? Keep going. You see that? <coughs> you see that? That's the roof. They are painting the beams now. <coughs> and that place can see 10,000 people. Even though we already exceeded 10,000 that comes to convention, but we can spread the 10,000 to see 20,000 people. It's God's project. And when we started this, in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, when we are doing any project, we do it cash. Because the Bible says, oh, no, man. But America, you have to get credit. I remember when I finished college, I was about to get an apartment. So I went to the apartment where I need an apartment. They said, what's your credit score? I said, I'm born again. I, I didn't believe in credit. I said, Any, anything I'm going to do, I've been taught that I have to pay cash down. They look at me and say, we don't believe in you, too. I said, what do you mean? They say, you must have, you must owe some, you must have a credit card. I said, no, I don't believe in credit card. They say, we don't believe in you. Amen. So they say, I need to go and get a letter from my supervisor that, yes, I'm going to stay in that job at least for one year. I said, what kind of society is this? But since then, I've been accumulating credit cards. <laughs> but every credit card I have, I pay it off at the end of the month. And smart business people is to use other people's money. Amen. So you want to charge 5000 6000 charge it. Use their money, but immediately the bill comes, pay it off. Amen. Amen. Is there any, any is, 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 am I violating anything? No. No, use other people's money. Keep your money in the bank, or you can put it somewhere, let it yield some interest. At the end of the month, what you owe, pay it off. Amen. I'm getting the point for it, and I'm getting some payback. Is it not, uh, what do you call it? There is this uh, Discover card. Seven hundred dollars at the end of the year. I give it to my wife, and she goes to the store and smile and give me a kiss. I say, "You are the man." Praise the Lord. That, that is it. What, what I'm saying is that God has helped us to build it up to this point. 
Amen. And you know how people did it? We are asking people, we are challenging people. Five dollars, fifteen dollars a month. Amen. Do you know that if you give twenty-five dollars a month towards this project, at the end of the year it's three hundred dollars? Towards God's project. It is God's work, not my work. I don't know how long I'm going to be a chairman. Then you may call me tomorrow and say, James, sir, you are no longer the chairman. But I thank God that when I'm here, I've done the best I can. Amen. 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 So what we are saying is that we want you to be a part of the blessing. People are filling out the forms and they are paying. Our father in the law was so challenged when he saw the project. When he does, when he did the 78th birthday, all of you, the money we collected, $750,000. That you, we cannot buy you a jet, but this is how much we can give you as our father. We believe in you. We love you. Here is your birthday present. When we are making the presentation, do you know how much that you gave us? 750. The man is out of this world. You give me 750 for birthday, I ain't giving you all alone. No, I'm just saying me. I'm not that idiot. Praise the Lord. You may not like him. Praise him. I will spend part of it. I may give you 20%, but I ain't giving you everything. And then he just said, part of my contribution, my family contribution, $750,000 towards the water tower. I, I, many of you saw me like that. that is our, if our father can lead by an example, and says, you know what? And when we made that presentation, I said, ah, the maximum then was $500 a month. At the end of the year, how much did that come to you? Six thousand. I'm giving five hundred a month. I'm going to look and say, James, what I have done for you? <laughs> you are giving more than five thousand, six thousand. Oh, by the special grace of God, between one year, I already gave my six thousand, and I'm increasing it to an additional four thousand to make it ten. I have to lead by example. So what we are saying is that we are part of the redeemed Christian Church of God. We are building this campus for us. You are building it for your children. So how many of you have pledged to give to us the camp project? And how many of you, if you have not pledged, we have the forms here. Amen. Can you remove this? We have the forms here. If God is speaking to your heart. Amen. And you know what? When you go to grocery store, you can trust them with your credit card. Amen. Amen. Why can't you trust us as a church with your credit card? And just say, you know what? We draw $50 every month from my card. And I can tell you, because we are people of integrity, your credit card is safe with us, and we are not going to take more than that, except you call and say, Pastor Fadi, I just love you. You know, instead of $50, start to withdraw $100. It will never violate you. Amen. Just as the Lord speaks to your heart, fill it out right now. Let us know $100, $10,000 every month. Amen. Because I know that I know in this church, billionaires are coming. Amen. And some of them are already seated. Amen. Millionaires. Amen. And you know how you are going to start? Can God trust you with $50 a month? If you can do it, God will always give you more than that. Our God is a giver, not a taker. For every seed that you sow, harvest is going to come into your life. Amen. Harvest is going to come into your family. Amen. And those of you who are feeling it today, I just want to pray for you right now. If you have committed yourself, I want to pray for you. Amen. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for this, your sons and your daughters that you have brought together this weekend. They've heard about the project in the camp and they want to be part of this project. Every money that is leaving the account, is not leaving the account, but it's leaving the account into your account. But your account is bigger. You said our God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. As they sow, let there be harvest into their lives. Amen. Let there be harvest into their finances. Amen. Let there be a harvest into their families. Amen. Into their children's children. Amen. Let the harvest continue Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God who has promised to give us a hundredfold return in this life and in the life to come eternal life. Let there be a hundredfold return Amen. into their finances. Amen. Bless them abundantly Amen. in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with them. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, every hand that gives is always on top in their businesses. In their businesses, Amen. let it be on top. Amen. In their offices, let promotion come Amen. from the throne room of the Almighty. Amen. Let there be a testimony that once we start giving towards the camp project, this is what God has done in my life. Amen. Let it be so, O oh Lord, and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please fill it out, fill it out, and God will bless you. I would like to have those forms back. 
before I go. Amen. Now you can you can go to rccjna.org. We update this site on a weekly basis so that you know what we are doing. Can you turn to the um, PowerPoint now? Amen. Let, let's on, on the giving. Yes, ma'am. For one year. For one year, yes. After one year, if you want, you can continue. If you don't want, you can say, you know what? Hey, I ain't giving any more. We respect that. But I bet you, when you see what God is doing, you will increase it by next year. Amen. But just let us know. I'm only giving this thing for 12 months. And after that, that is it. And we are going to be sending you receipts every month. That we've taken this out. And next month, we've taken last month. And this money is total we have received. And this is how much more you've authorized us to take. And thank God the CFO is in the house. Amen, Pastor Peter. I will praise the Lord. And he will see to He's a man of integrity and he's a man of his words. And God will bless you as you give in Jesus' name. Also, our camp, our project in Nigeria, RTC GNA House, is going on. We, we laid the foundation when we were in Nigeria in February. There are about four phases to this project. The first phase is $2 million. And when we finish, it's going to be an excellent uh, hotel. Amen. It's going to be the best building in the camp. There are going to be internet access. There's going to be a cafe there. Amen. If you want coffee, even though coffee is not good for you. Amen. But it's your choice. Praise the Lord. You have the internet cafe. When you leave your room, by the time you come back, they will have cleaned it and make it like a typical hotel here in the U.S. And it's going to be first of its kind. And it's ongoing. And the Lord will bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. And also get involved with the communities, going to your city mayors, community leaders, schools, hospital, police department. Tell them that you don't come to take, you come to give to the community. And once they ask you, you know, make sure you give to the community. RCS, RCBCNA, we are unifying the two Bible colleges, amen? The West Coast and the, the one in California, the one in the East Coast in Baltimore. We are trying to, and management board MD and the board of trustees, we have set up to synergize all these two campuses. RCCGNA has a vision to establish a global university called Ronama as part of the educational program. And papers have been presented, amen, of the MD and the BOT, and I'm reviewing it for approval. And RCCG seminary in Texas is set up as a springboard for Ronama. And God is blessing it in Jesus' name. And the leader of this RCCG seminary in Texas is Pastor Dr. Sayo Ajiboye. Let's give a clap offering because he's doing an excellent job. Amen. It's a world-class seminary we are starting, and we are going to use it to get our accreditation for the Bible College. And after we get the accreditation, we we'll submit it to the BOT, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Next slide. Introduction, the Lighthouse. We have a career college in Texas, and it's offering nursing program, biomedical bio, bio programs, and technical, technician programs. Amen. And God established it 2012, and it's a platform for RCCG to be involved in the community. And many people in the community are coming to take GED and some of these courses. It's going to be funded by the federal government, and uh, it's going on very well. And the leader is Pastor uh, Dr. Abiodu Bada, and God is blessing the ministry. Also, the Redeemer's Credit Union, amen. We are starting a bank in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Amen. It's a credit union. Why, why do you want to start this? One of our coordinators in New York, Pastor Montoshio, very vibrant pastor, the, uh, what do you call, S, S, uh, R, is it SBC, SBC? HSBC. HSBC. They call him, Pastor, come and close your account. Why? Well, majority of people coming to your church are Nigerians, and Nigerians are known for 419. They are known for credit card fraud, so come and close your account. The guy, pastor says, no, I'm not hearing you very well. They said, we don't need your business. Oh, no. ah. It was just like joke. Although later they apologized. But they already said what they have to say. Yes. When you are going to people's houses, they can't give you anything. They can ask you to go and sleep in the toilet. You don't like it, go and buy your own house. Uh, hello? Yes. So right there and there we made up our minds. says, you know what? We are big enough. Do you know that RCCGNA, our net worth, of our people coming to church is 1.6 billion every year, what we spend. Can you imagine if you can put back of that money? And that's why you need to study the Jewish people. Right? Go and read this book, The Jewish Phenomenon. Jewish people, they always patronize each other. 
Jewish people, when they set up a business, amen, they don't work for anybody. They work for themselves. People patronize that, but they don't patronize anybody. We are smart enough, amen, to have a work class economy, Nigerians. So what we say is, do you know if you can set up a credit union? Amen. Amen. We can operate it from our churches. We can put our tithes there. We can hire our own people. We can give loans out. Amen. Do you know that a typical Christian African, amen, will never default on his loan? He may just need $10,000 to set up a business. Before an American bank can give you $10,000, they will know that you have something more than $10,000. They can see it. But once we know that you are a born-again Christian and you are a minister in the church, we know you cannot run. If your pastor can testify to it. So we are going to make sure not only are we going to look at your credit score to look at, to give you credit, but there are some other things you can look at to give you the loan. And do you know what? Since we know that you are a child of God, you are not going to run away. Do you know that that business started with $10,000? When profits come, you are not going to run away from that bank. We know there are more many of our people are fraudulent. But at the same time, we don't judge every tree by the leaves. Amen. We judge you by your character. So what we are saying is that when we set up our credit union, we are going to give car loan. There are many people who are just taking a job. They will move to Baltimore or they move to Los, Los Angeles. All they need is $5,000 to buy a car. But they say you don't have a credit, but we know you are a child of God. If he give you $5,000, it may be 5%, 7% interest rate. When you know that we help you today, you will not leave us tomorrow. You can come back to our church. That's our credit union. And we're already making sure that the credit union is going to be federally insured credit union. It's going to take us one year to get the accreditation. But we want to do it excellently. So that when it is done, when it comes, it's going to start in Texas, from there to New York. We want to make sure we perfect it. So when it comes here, amen, will you patronize our bank? Yes. Do you know that's why the credit card companies, they don't make money from the credit card. They make money from those who can pay everything up at the end of the month, 25% interest rate. How much should be charged? Maybe 10%. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And do you know the profit? That's what we are going to use to set up the retirement for our pastors. Pastor Chi, we ain't going to be a pastor forever. Amen. amen. She said, she said, amen. Praise the Lord. And many of our pastors, we need to take care of our pastors. And we are going to use the profit from some of these ventures. Amen. To take care of our pastors. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Pastors' welfare. Every pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God have $100,000 farm life insurance. And their spouses have $45,000. In addition, all parishes must have a time life insurance for their pastors. The minimum is $250,000. National prayer teleconference. Every month we have prayer teleconference on the first Monday of every month at 10.30 p.m. Pastor Adini is doing an excellent job. Make sure in every zone we have a prayer secretary that logs into this line. And also within the province, we have a prayer coordinator that prays for every pastor, that prays for everybody in the province. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Also, the Talk to Israel, fun field upliftment programs and events. For more information, please let us contact our provincial pastor. And who is our provincial pastor? Can you please give us just one minute summary about the Talk to Israel? Thank you, sir. I, the Israel trip will be between May uh, 16th and um, 25th next year, and that the Jew is leading that particular tree. The reason why we encourage people to go is because it's a new dimension to your Christian growth, to life and everything. The first time I went in 1999, God spoke to me personally as to how my ministry will be for 10 years. The challenges I will go through and everything. The Lord said, boy, I'm going to drag clean you. I'm going to drag you on the floor. If you stay with me, by the time you finish, you'll be a finished product. And it will take 10 years. I worked bitterly, but that's what happened. The chairman went with us um, four years ago. A similar experience. Amen. You may say it's expensive. Like we said yesterday, there are certain experiences that are very expensive, but they are invaluable. And if we organize it from the West Coast, whatever it is that your problem may be, at least let's discuss it first. And then there is nothing God cannot do from there. God bless you. Thank you. I'm pleased to see the website on the phone number. You want to know more about it? 
right n5 at yahoo.com world evangelism day the first friday of every june amen our father and the lord have declared that saturday to be world evangelism day and if you go to www.rccgen.org look at the resources and click on evangelism there is a what you call it a powerpoint you put there on how you can use one verse of the scriptures to evangelize amen African missions, North America, during the presentation on ethics, uh, Pastor Onwafo mentioned about African missions on a monthly basis. Amen. We must collect offering for African missions. Am I communicating? Yes, Let us make sure we do it conscientiously, and the Lord will bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. Our agenda or our prayer is that every year we raise $1 million for African missions, and God is going to use that mission to bless our people in Africa in Jesus' name. Amen. Next slide. Oh, I'm the one controlling it. <laughs> Amen. Children's ministry. You see now, am I the one controlling or you are the one controlling it? Okay, African missions, young adult ministry, Yazim. Amen. Amen. Pastor Licky, where are you? It's raptured. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that we know we prepare and be ready to go. Can you just quickly talk about Yazim for one minute, please? He's so excited about Yazim, and I thank God that uh, the Lord appointed him to be the leader of Yazim. Many people are getting married. He's going to, he's going to become a grandpa very soon. <laughs> Amen. Yazim is an acronym for Young Adult and Singles Ministry. Amen. From uh, age 19 to 40, yes, if you are as young as me, you are a member of Yazim. Amen. And uh, there are too many things going on in Yazim that uh, I will need another day to do that. But the, the, the challenge we have is most of our parishes in the West Coast are not having Yazim at all. Yes, there are parishes that don't have Yazim at all. So we are making efforts to encourage parishes to set up. Don't wait until you have 10 singles or 10 young adults. As few as five, we can start something. And from there, you'll be amazed how the ministry will grow. We had a very fantastic convention in Atlanta. The chairman was our special guest speaker, and it was really very great. So we're having the next one in uh, Chicago. The Windy City. The Windy City in July. Please, I want to encourage you. You can't afford to miss this. Even if you are above 40, we'll give you a special observer status. In Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' name. And it's not limited to those that are single. If you are young, as young as me, you know, and you are excited about the things going on with the young, young people, you are, you are, we have a space for you. Please go to our website and, and, and be excited about it. Praise the Lord. Do you know that other members of other churches are joining the young adults now? And that's why we need to pray for them. Some of them have intentions that are not as ours. Some of them just are looking for a wife. Even though they are not born again, they know we have beautiful daughters here. And some of them will lie and say, yeah, we are going to redeem. Ask them, who is your pastor? They don't know. Amen. So be careful, please. They are mixed multitudes coming out because they can see the excitement that is happening. And weddings are just, bells, wedding bells are just being rung almost everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's not the intention though, when I started it. But how many of us who are parents will not have, amen. If God is allowing it to happen, I won't fight it. It's okay, you find your wife, you find your husband, I'm praying for more of them. But the reason why we have the Yazim is for networking. To see somebody who is excited about God, so you can be excited too. So if you have a daughter, you have a son, and it's over 19, make sure they join the years. In. The, youth, yeah, the youth fellowship is for people who are under 18. Make sure Pastor Mujio Lagbig is doing an excellent job. They have a Sunday school manual ready right now. Please contact her. And also the Pastor's Wife Forum. Amen. How many Pastor's Wife do you have in the house? Amen. Please, you must go for the PWF, and the church must pay. Your church must pay for your accommodation and your registration. I can't hear amen. amen. Pastors, you pay for your wife. She's a co-pastor. You pay for, it's been done. How many of you are saying you can't afford it? 
your wife must come, and you are welcome too. Amen. It's the same room that your wife is going to stay in anyways. Right? Right? It's going to be the same room you are going to stay in. While they are having their conference, we can be praying the Spirit. Amen for them. And be sipping coffees and be watching the ESPN. And be praying for them. But please, all pastors, please make sure you attend. You know, I don't know about this woman. If women want to have a, a get-together, we go to Holiday Inn, Motel 8, and have fun. But they just start at Five Star Hotel. They did the pedicure, manicure. And one of our senior pastors, the last time they came, amen, she's never had a massage before. So mama had massage, she fell asleep on the massage. <laughs> then she got home, he said, darling, I want to be doing massage every month. <laughs> Pastor Fadil, what did you do to my wife? I didn't see your wife. <laughs> Who is going to pay for the Messiah? I say you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Didn't they deserve it though? They do. They, they, they do. They do. Do you know that pastor's wife have issues they cannot discuss with anybody else? Yeah. And that is why they must have each other's back. They must talk to one another. They must encourage you. It's not all preaching, 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 preaching. You know, women, when they talk at times, eh? what are you guys talking about? The main thing, they are not talking about it. Just get to the point. Where are you going and coming? by? Finish. But women, they will take 30 minutes because they want connection. They want relationship. Who cares about relationship? Give me what I want. I'm God. <laughs> May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So women must have a time together where they can vent, where they can pray for one another, where they can encourage each other. So that's PWF. Women in ministry, we thank God for Pastor Mrs. Margaret and they are doing an outstanding job. February every month, annual conference in February, Every year, the Lord has been adding to the numbers. They have been increasing because of the leadership of Pastor Margaret Adeyokunu. And please, if you're a woman minister and you haven't attended, you are missing a lot. Please plan to attend it next year, February. And you want more information, go to wim at rccgna.org. Amen. Royal priesthood. How many pastor's children do you have in the house? Pastor's children. Raise up your hand. Clap for them. Clap for them. How many pastor's children do you have in the house? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. My twins, let them stand up now. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Praise the Lord. Pastors, children, stand up. Please, I want you to stretch forth your hand to them and prophesy into their lives that the hand of God will be upon them. The Bible says the seed of the righteous shall be great, that they will be great in the name of Jesus. They are going to be greater than their parents. Where their parents finish is where they are going to take off in the name of Jesus. Morally, they be outstanding. Spiritually, they be outstanding. In every way, they be out. They will not die. They will live. They will be stars for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with them. And God will fulfill his purpose and desires upon their lives. And so I declare, and so it shall be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. My daughter, every time we are going to church at night, my lass says, Is it Holy Ghost night again? <laughs> you can see them. You know, they are facing pressures that many of us never face when we are growing up. They can't do anything. But you know, you're a pastor's kid. They can't go anywhere because they are pastor's children. They are facing pressures many of us never face. And they're in this country. And that's why they shall be great in Jesus' name. Amen. And please, all those of you who are pastor's children, log on to that website www.rccgeneroyalpriesthood.org. The leader herself is the daughter of the general overseer. Can you imagine what she goes through when she was growing up? So she has all the answers. Because there are some questions they will not ask you, but they can ask from each other. So please, if you're a pastor's child, make sure you go to that website or call that line, and there's somebody there who will answer your calls. These are the events and the calendars for the year, Men of Valor. Amen. August, we have already completed that. September, Men of Valor in the West Coast. Ministers' Conference for the East Coast is when? The one for the West Coast, because we're in the West Coast in Dallas. What date is that? Make sure, make sure you come. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Have powerful men of God who are coming for this minister's conference. Pastor Jolai yeah, and Pastor Day, me, myself, and the provincial pastors, we are going to be there. And also, that leadership ministry that we have today, I want to find a way to include it in the minister's conference. Which one? The, one, the 10 mistakes, the one that you did yesterday. No problem. We pay for it. <laughs> Amen. As long as I give you pandemia, you are set to <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pastor's Wife Forum in November and in December. Make sure you come for the Holy Ghost Congress. 
And it's not 17 to the 22nd. That's a wrong date. It's not. It's 10 to the 17th. So please make sure you're correct. Because if you go on the 17th, the Congress will have been over by then. Amen. These are our leaders in the province. Give the Lord a clap offering for Pastor Nino and Pastor Gora. Amen. And the coordinators, Pastor Lakey Ojo is in the house. Give the Lord a clap offering for him. Pastor Innocent Odinigwe, he's not here. He has taken special permission not to be here because of some other, uh, what do you call it, some emergencies. Pastor Dami Sule, give the Lord a clap offering for him. <laughs> Pastor Chiwenwa, give the Lord a clap offering for him. Pastor Ian Kashomoto, give the Lord a clap offering for him. And Pastor Shego Lushola, give the Lord a clap offering for him. Those are our leaders. We have one. Oh, okay. It's, that, that's a mistake. I will. That's my error. You have good eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And these are the board of provincial pastors. We thank God for their lives. We have 10 of them. And by the special grace of God, they started well. They will finish well in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord will use us to take RCC North America to the next level. Amen. I hope you get it correct over there, right? Yes. Win up one. Amen. That is the end. Questions and answers now.